today we're glad to speak to an international star when it comes to matters rugby. Of course, he played rugby at the big stage, both continental and global. I'm talking about the former Springboks winger and captain as well, Tonderai Chavanga. Good to see you, bro. Good to see you too. It's what do you make of your stay in Kenya? It's been, uh, it's been awesome. I've learned a little bit of uh, Swahili as well, Jumbo. Sawa sawa. Sawa. Kuja hapa. Songa mbele. I'm not at that stage yet, but no, it's been, it's been a great stay. I've enjoyed uh, working with the kids. Uh, it's full of energy, full of talent, and uh, yeah, it's really been a great stay. I know you're here at Katasov Bubesi Foundation Pride, an initiative that is trying to ensure that young people are given an opportunity and a platform to play rugby and even uh, get to be taught the life skills. How has it yeah. been like, you know, mingling with Kenyan kids, especially from, you know, yeah. the... Uh, tough background yeah look i think uh, for me i'm i'm one of them i grew up i didn't grow up uh, from a rich background i grew up from very humble beginnings so for me being able to work with kids that are in the same situation that i perhaps i was uh is is great because it just it's just something that just uh for me i believe all they need is just an opportunity for them to actually uh, make something of their lives and I think we are here for rugby yes but rugby is merely the doorway into actually uh, sowing uh, positive influence in, uh, po positive influence into their lives I know you've traversed several parts of the country and uh, right now as you speak you are conducting your clinic in the African continent and Kenya we are blessed to have you around but generally South Africa when it comes to matters rugby it's a powerhouse they are heavyweights they have given us sleepless nights when we're playing against them <laughs> generally in terms of rugby standards in Kenya do you think uh, we are at par we are getting somewhere look I think the only reason why um, well one of the main reasons why Kenya Zimbabwe, Namibia and, and other African rugby houses, uh, rugby countries are not at the same part as, as South Africa is I think the main reason is, is finances. Uh, if you look at where we are today, uh, we were supposed to be training the kids but because of the rain, the the field is in such a bad state that even we can't even like walk around. It's like you know, our our, our shoes and boots are full of full of mud. Whereas in most parts of South Africa, uh, there's, a, there's enough resources behind it where maybe the fields have got good drainage, uh, things like rain and all of that won't really necessarily affect the kids. So uh, in a nutshell, Africa has got a lot of talent, but uh, in, order, in order for us to realize the talent that, that our, our kids have got, it's important that we have, uh, you know, we have the financial muscle behind it. I know just like you indicated earlier when we started this particular interview, you said that you know you came from tough background as well. For someone who is watching and is passionate about rugby and he wants to defy odds the same way you did to uh, become a global star, what should they do? Look, I think the most important thing is you've got to have work ethic. Uh, you, you can never, you can't, you can't achieve anything in life without without having that uh, that undying spirit of of giving, of giving, your, giving your absolute best. And uh, like for me, I, I always say that it's important for first of all, uh, you might not necessarily have the best access to the coaches and all of that, but I think now. The, there's so much information that you can get from, let's say, the internet, YouTube, on how to pass, how to do so many different things. But most important thing is, guys have got to have that hunger to want to want to succeed. And uh, you know, going forward, I know you've watched our uh, Kenya's national teams, both sevens and fifteens, participating in international events. Do you think we've got what it takes to, you know, play at the big stage and continue with the same momentum, even surpassing what other heavyweights have done? Well, I mean, look at uh, what happened last last weekend, where Kenya actually convincingly beat uh, beat South Africa. So we definitely, I think Kenya has got enough. Uh, Kenya has got enough talent. Uh, but once again, their sevens, their sevens program is going well because there's a bit of financing behind it. So I think if the 15-man game, I mean, I've, being the assistant coach of the Zim side, uh, we know how talented the Kenyan, the Kenyan athletes are, rugby players are. So for us, uh, we know that whenever we come to play against Kenya, whenever Kenya comes to play against Zimbabwe, it's going to be a tough day. But once again, it boils down to the, the financial side of things. And uh, if we have just a little bit more finances in our African rugby, we're going to have uh, really powerhouses. There's been this tough argument amongst Kenyan rugby uh, fans uh, between sevens and fifteens. You know, Kenyan fans say that sevens is sort of cosmetic, fifteens is really rugby. As someone who played both, what are your thoughts on the same? Oh, look, I think, uh, realistically speaking, if 
if we really want to compete on on African stage is on the African sorry on the international stage yes. is African teams. The best way of us doing that is sevens. Uh, we've got the athletes. Uh, we've got I think we've got natural flair uh, that is best suited for the game. So I think if if more once again I always go to the to the money because you can't you really you can't you know it's 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 a, it's a difficult thing to to achieve anything without actually financial backing. So I I do believe even when you look at Zimbabwe, yes we've got we've had several international 50 men um, players like Beast Mtarira, uh, Dave Pocock and you know then the list goes on. Yes. Uh, that have uh, really achieved at, at, at the the biggest stages in the world, but it's because they went to really good schools and then from the really good schools they were then signed to like the Sharks or the Brumbies um, or the Western Force which is where the, their talents were able to, to actually uh, rea be, be, be realized. So I think with us, um, just a little bit of financial backing, the sevens programs will go a long way and I, I, it, it has shown Kenya can Kenya has beaten the top sides in the sevens, has beaten the All Blacks, has beaten South Africa, has beaten everybody. So there is no reason why they cannot continue to, to beat the top nations. There's no reason why Zimbabwe cannot continue or cannot beat the, the top uh, sevens nations either. So, as we speak right now, Zimbabwe is a country that is coming up very well when it comes to matters rugby. Their growth has been quite tremendous and uh, you are the assistant coach for their national team. How are things like? Back look, look, it's tough. In South. Um, it's really tough. We've got the talent, but uh, we don't have... Uh, from a from a corporate point of view, the, because the corporates are struggling financially, yes. they can't put money into into um, you know into into our our rugby rugby players. I mean, what our players get paid is absolutely peanuts, and uh, majority of the players really are relying on that money that they get paid for by rugby to make a to make a to make a living. So, you know, we've got all the talent in the world, but then we. Because of a lack of finances, it's, it makes it a little bit difficult for, for us to, to move forward. But however, we have uh, obviously uh, significantly improved by winning the Victoria Cup uh, last year. Yes. So, of which, you know, we had our last game against Kenya here, which we, uh, which we lost. Kenya were the better <laughs> team on the, on, on the day. But uh, yeah, look, at, at the end of the day, uh, African rugby is, is very strong uh, and I think it will continue to get better. And man, what was the feeling like when South Africa beat England during the 2019 Rugby World Cup? You know, being crowned champions and, uh, you know, the trophy, the prestigious trophy coming back home in Joburg. How was it like in terms of celebration, the mood? Man, look, I mean, from a personal point of view, I never, I never once had a doubt that we would win it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think the, the celebration, winning the World Cup was just, I mean, it was amazing. Yes. But what is even more, more amazing? Uh, once again, when we, we look at the kids that we're working with here, they're all coming from, you know, obviously very tough backgrounds, which someone like Sia Kulisi did come from. He didn't come from money either. So I think that victory uh, was quite, uh, quite significant, not only for South Africa, but uh, for the continent as well. Generally, your take on the run as far as HSBC World 7 Series is concerned, we are on the fourth leg, just concluded over the weekend in Sydney 7s. What do you make of the progress, the run, the campaign? How has it been like in terms of competition, Steve? Yeah, I mean, it's always it's always really tough. Uh, it's always really tough, but as you know, with it, I think the top the top four have, haven't changed that much in the last <laughs> few years, so you always you can, New Zealand, South Africa, you can kind of predict. However, I mean, when you look at the group stages, you know, Surprises do happen uh, where anybody can beat anybody at the, at the, at the, at the end of the day. So, but it's, it's it's great competition, and I think it's obviously the women's game is also it's taking a little bit long to, to really get going. But it's awesome that they are playing at the same stage as the men as well. And we need we need our ladies, um, you know, being given that platform to, to showcase their talent. And you know, on a light note, when we have an international star round or in terms of success of any global icon, Kenyans tend to associate themselves with them. Now that you are in Kenya few rugby uh, fans who know about your whereabouts want you to you know continue with your stay in Kenya and probably if possible run some initiative here in Nairobi that will go a long way in uh, helping rugby growth and development of the same what's your word to them uh, look I mean I'm Zimbabwean I live in South Africa <laughs> but most, most importantly I'm an African yeah uh, I'm here because uh, you know I think I've been given a platform where, you know, I, I can have some sort of a, 
yeah. inspiration to some kids somewhere. Yes. Uh, so wherever I can get the opportunity, I would love to come back to Kenya again and and run this this uh, this type of in, uh, initiatives. Um, uh, and I think it's 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 great that you know Kenya has produced some some really iconic uh, rugby players on the seven scene, not just uh, not just on the African continent, but you know internationally. If you look at a guy like Collins Injera, what yes. he has been able to do over the last more than 10 years has just been phenomenal so it's great i'm sure colin someone like colin would have um you know programs like that as well and i mean he's when you know when we work with these kids all the kids know who colin is so so collins is so it's, it's awesome your parting shot your final thoughts with regards to rugby in kenya rugby in africa and even rugby at the world stage yeah, geez, I think uh, rugby in Africa is very much alive. We've got all the talent that uh, that we need, and we just need to we just need to make sure that the there's certain stuff that we can do that don't require a lot of finances. Um, you know, so I think uh, our unions need to do better in terms of coming up with really good programs, grassroots programs that uh, that can get kids more kids more involved in, in rugby. Tonderai Chavanga, former Springboks captain, winger, speaking to us exclusively to give his source with regards to rugby in Kenya, in Nairobi, especially the potential among the kids, of course, lauding the growth for, you know, what he's been witnessed during their clinics they have been conducting in Nairobi. And he's saying that we'll be back in Kenya. For the Kenyan girls who've been on Twitter saying that they want Tonderai Chavanga to stay, he says he'll continue to stay and probably will come back. Cindy? Thank you. Asante sana. Asante sana. Karibu. Karibu. <laughs> Shabanga!